Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 20th of December and maybe the last update before Christmas as I really don't know if there'll be any updates to actually report next week. Hopefully everyone is just relaxing as everyone really needs to. Um, as always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this video a like, a subscribe, comment and share. Um, over the past week, I actually released a whole bunch of videos. There were some announcements that I wanted to kind of clear up. So general technology videos, uh, I created a video on routing preference, really hot and cold potato and what that means, how we can use that with storage accounts and public IP addresses. What is Azure Peering, something where we access the public facing Microsoft services and we can kind of opt into these certain providers to guarantee kind of this one hop to the Microsoft network. Then there were these huge changes um, announced around certification. So I created a video on that. Basically now you can just take these annual assessments online through Microsoft Learn and renew your certifications for additional years. No more every two years, this big stressful revising and taking this big test. And then Kubernetes announced kind of this uh, dropping of support for Docker in the future. So I just want to dive into really what that meant. And it's really not a big deal. It's just the Docker engine, i.e. the container runtime that's going away. Pretty much a non-event if you're using any kind of cloud uh, managed Kubernetes offering. Now, something I did mention last week was kind of trying to work out this 12 days of Christmas thing for Azure. And I really got as far as kind of three availability zones, um, two geoped regions, and an instance of Azure AD. And actually, uh, Matt Hansen online on LinkedIn, I posted this on LinkedIn, kind of completed this out. And so I thought we would kind of finish this off, this 12 days of Azure. So warning now, if you want to avoid hearing me sing very, very badly, go and look at the bookmarks and jump ahead where we actually start looking at compute services. Um, but here we go. On the 12th day of Christmas, Azure gave to me 12 web app scaling, 11 app gateway serving, 10 twins are digital, 9 network watchers, 8 event hubs, 7 network subnets, 6 key vault secrets, 5 golden images, ba bum 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 four SQL replicas, three availability zones, two geoped regions, and an instance of Azure AD. There you go. So I told you I couldn't skin. And again, that was Matt Hansen. You can blame um, for having to hear me do that. Okay, so now actually, what are the updates this week? So on the computer side, I think I'll take this hat off now. Automatic VM placement uh, and virtual machine scale sets on dedicated hosts is now GA. So if we remember the whole point about a dedicated host is ordinarily it's all shared multi-tenant infrastructure. So a dedicated host, we actually get our own physical host. It's still regular Azure, it's just only our VMs will go on it. So we purchase the dedicated host of a certain SKU and that SKU supports a certain type of virtual machine. Let's just make one up. Let's just say it's kind of a, like a D type SKU. Well, then I can fill that up with D type virtual machines of different sizes. So that would be a D of a certain size. That would be a smaller D size, etc. So it's just my workloads on that host. So that's a dedicated host. So what you can actually do is I can create well, multiple of those of kind of the same SKU and I can group them into a host group. So what I can now do is when I'm creating resources, be it a virtual machine or a virtual machine scale set, I can target the host group instead of an individual host and it will automatically place them where there's kind of capacity, maybe trying to balance them out uh, across different sort of kind of fault domains that I specify as part of those dedicated hosts. So that capability is now GA. Also around dedicated hosts, so they now have a SKU that actually supports the Intel SGX 
confidential computing. So this is all around these software guard extensions, the SGX, that create these data partitioned and compute partitioned enclaves on the hardware. So I can now protect myself even against some kernel level type attack. Now with this dedicated host support, I can create this DCSV type SKU of dedicated host. And onto that, I can put the DCSV2 virtual machines that support that SGX. So if I need that confidential computing and I need dedicated hosts, I need to make sure I'm the only one on that particular physical box, maybe because of compliance reasons, um, you can now do that. On the networking side, Azure Automation now has private link support. So remember, Azure Automation accounts can do different things. Uh, I can run kind of workbooks, scripts. It can be a DSC pull server. So with this support, now I could have, for example, a webhook to trigger um, a runbook. Well, that can now be on a private endpoint, that webhook. I can think that state configuration service, the D PowerShell DSC pull server, I can now speak to over that private endpoint. Um, I could execute runbooks via hybrid workers. Um, even update management can now work across that private endpoint capability. Storage side, um, we just Event Hub. So Event Hub is that super powerful big data streaming set of capability event ingestion service. Millions of kind of signals I can support. Now I can run that on that turnkey Azure Stack Hub appliance. Miscellaneous, uh, access control. This may have been there for a while and I just haven't noticed it. But you can actually now go ahead and actually download the role assignments. If I jump over super quick, if we look at the portal, what I can see in here is if I just go and look at something, uh, let's just pick storage accounts. If I go and look at a storage account and I look at the access control, you can see this kind of download role assignments option. So I can actually go ahead and download all the assignments. I can even do this check access so I can view my access to resources and it will actually show me, hey, this is the access you have and this is why. So this is the scope you actually have this set at and you can see here, hey, it's inherited down um, from the subscription. So that may have been there for a really long time and I just didn't notice it, uh, but I saw that so I thought I'd kind of point that out, make sure I share that. Defender for Azure Resource Manager and DNS. So as we know, the Azure Security Center, now it's kind of enhanced those standard offerings and our Defender branded, and they're really focusing on kind of depth and breadth. So the depth of things like Defender for Key Vault, for Storage, for Cosmos DB. Now they have these breadth offerings. So the Azure Resource Manager and DNS. So for the Azure Resource Manager, it's looking at, for example, the activity log on your subscription and some internals, and it's looking for types of behavior that indicate, hey, something bad is happening. There are various exploitation tools. So one I was playing with was PowerJour, and it detects it. It says, hey, we see this thing coming in, you're trying to bypass this certificate-based automation account, you're creating credentials, it will see that and alert you to that. For the DNS, I, well, I'll actually show you. So for the DNS, I did a whole bunch of fun attacks um, against my tenant. So if we jump over to here, and I'll go and look at my security center. So firstly, it's in preview right now, so you can play around this. If I go to pricing and settings, I look at my subscription, Again, we have this Azure Defender on, and what we can see is down the bottom in preview, I've turned these on. So this is the Resource Manager and DNS. And I basically uh, did a bunch of attacks against myself. So if I go to my security alerts, and we look at these by date, you can see a whole bunch of these, but you'll see they're all kind of DNS related, all of these attacks. So you can see there's like, hey, possible data exfiltration, um, anonymity network, communication with suspicious ranges, suspicious kind of algorithms running against it, possible phishing attacks, digital currency mining, basically a whole bunch of different types of signals it's picking up. And remember the whole point of all of these things 
is to actually have protection, we have to get the signals in, I, we, we grab them, we put them in something like log analytics, then we have to apply machine learning to see patterns in those signals to detect behavior. So that's what these solutions do. For ARM, it's looking at the activity log and some internal logs. For the DNS, again, it's looking at those sort of signals internally. And it can find and spot those types of things happening and warn us so we can go and do something about it. Okay. So, also, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. They now actually have in preview this screen capture protection. So if I turn this on, anything that's running inside that Windows Virtual Desktop client, today it's only Windows 10, I cannot capture with a screen capture or screen streaming or anything that's really capturing the screen. I'm just going to see this black box. It will protect anything coming down from Windows Virtual Desktop, so I cannot capture that content. So that's in preview. And that's really it. So a, a fairly quiet week. Um, I hope that was useful. I hope everyone is going to be able to enjoy the holidays and, and disconnect and recharge. Um, everyone stay safe. And again, if there are some updates, I'll do a little quick update uh, probably Thursday of next week just before Christmas. But if not, have a fantastic holidays and uh, take care of yourselves.